British government covered up on it. More and more is information has come to light in the last few months. I've seen police documents. It's, I never dreamt of those things. And with dealing with the past, I, I believe former police officers are out there and want to tell the truth, but have been stopped from telling the truth. Police officers have spoken to me for a number of years, but recently some of these police officers handle agents. They showed me the documents of agents sitting with them, admitting to murders, describing in detail who carried the murder out, who was with them, the, the victims themselves, who took them away. These police officers went back to their headquarters at Castle Ryan, out of strike, and spoke with bosses, superintendents, chief inspectors and chief superintendents, both CID and special branch. I read the conversations that took place when those officers went back. Police officers in charge told them they weren't to be arrested because they worked for the branch. In, in one case in particular, it says they had to arrest them. This is their handlers had to arrest them because in this one case, Mark Halleck had admitted to his branch handler and CID handler. I told them the whole story about the murder, in particular of Sean McKenna in 83. Their bosses told them they couldn't arrest the driver. Send the documents, the driver was willing and dying. Special branch agent from Rothkill. Who I knew, I knew his family. He says he couldn't arrest him because he, he was weak and he would break and he would tell him, give the information, squeal on his mates. The superintendent <coughs> made sure up to this day that Willie Van Denning couldn't be arrested. And he's never been arrested. He's taken out of the country and given a new life in England. Like a lot of many other informers. There's murder after murder in these documents. It showed a cover up to ensure that families wouldn't get the truth and get justice. And I, all those all those years from the young Raymond's murder, I've been working with victims. And I say victims, I have been working with Protestants, Catholics, I've been working with victims. And the problem I see here in David in the past is for too for too many people. Right, and within my community, the English community, and also within the nationalist community, people look at, at what the other side done. They should be looking at what their own side committed against their own community and against the other so-called community too. Far too often the fingers always point at the other community. The British government and security forces made us think that way, and are content for us to keep thinking that way. I met some of the people at of Bloody Sunday, I spoke in Boston where, and I quite openly said it, the people in Bloody Sunday weren't shot, they were murdered. But they were murdered in a lot of other people from Derry, like uh, Patsy Gillespie, the Haggerty and all murdered too. And we don't hear people in Derry talking about these murders. You're going to talk about one, talk about them all. Don't pick and choose who you want to get justice here. You know, it's the people in Derry and the rest of the people in Northern Ireland and Ulster, whatever you want to call it, I say some murders are justifiable. I can see it. And I certainly don't agree with it. So we all have to look at ourselves and say, what are we doing to help the peace process? I don't see the politicians helping the peace process. It's a comfy club up at Stormont. For years now, I went and met Jerry Adams in the Falls Road. The, the media made a big fuss and saw him dance over. There's someone from the Eunice community going to see him. I hope that Jerry Adams would have fought my son's case to get justice and bring out what really happened. Over the last few years, how often do we see Sinn Féin talking about collusion? It was a big issue for years. It was a big issue for the families in Derry, particularly the Bloody Sunday families where so many people were murdered in one day. But all of a sudden, it's not a big issue. It's because the DUP and Sinn Féin work closely, and then when the, whatever party is meets their supporters, they start sco trying to score points again. That's sectarianism, that's not politics. 
you know, the thing in the past needs to be dealt with, and it needs to be dealt with in a way that politicians aren't going to dictate and determine what happens to families like mine and some of the people sitting here today. We should be deciding what the truth and recovery process is going to be. The talk about the use fancy words and all the mechanisms of all this here, we want a process put in place to deal with the past. The British government can't decide what it's going to be. I see representation from the Unis community over the flags protest. I see the DUP bringing people on board. The people on board aren't representative of the Unis community. The paramilitaries. Most of the community workers within Unis communities are senior paramilitaries. We've seen it all uh, lately. Matt Baggett gave a speech here last week relating to the UVF ceasefire. According to Matt Baggett, from 94 when the UVF declared a ceasefire, they haven't reached the ceasefire. But within the Unis community alone, there's 29 Protestants have been murdered. There's been convictions in two of those cases. It was Rob McElwain, 18 years of age and 19 years of age. Two young ones had their throats cut, they were spying at UVF. There was a conviction simply because there was a supergrass. There was a cover up in that case. I attended the trial along with Paul Fowler. For my bag at the say it's an insult to all those families and an insult to the rest of the people in this country. I asked myself why has he said it? Why does he want to cover up on a paramilitary illegal terrorist organization? has consistently murdered innocent people. Only Mark Baggett knows that answer. But it fits in with what the British government have been doing here for years. Of people argue and fight among each other, point the finger at each other, and rather let the truth come out. Our politicians don't talk about the truth. We see there lately a young lad shot up in a bottom of my cold rain, 15 year old. Shot in the legs. We see the comments as reading this morning from Gregory Campbell that these people shouldn't take the law in their own hand. If it was Republicans had a shot a 15 year old Protestant in the legs, that's the sort of comments we would be making. It would be sectarian comments and vice versa. We see the same thing happens, you know, when uh, ones in the Republican side shoot, shoot young lads. The condemnation alone is not enough. The people in the community have got to do more. You've got to speak, and I agree with the last speaker, they talk to the MLAs, who are supposed to be representing the community, not, present, not to represent the community, community that they decide to represent. Just because a person doesn't vote for you doesn't mean you can't speak for them. 